Yo, how we doing today? Good to see you. Welcome to another day here on the channel. I have a cat trying to destroy my arm. Oh, hi. We're chilling. How you guys doing? You playing some 40k? Got a couple hours of, of 40k coming at you. Hi, good kitty. Is he still up there? Oh, hi, Gary Keen. He's chilling. That cat be chilling. Yep, I'm talking to you, buddy. He's looking, looking right at me. All the kitties today. All right. Rah. Okay. Ooh. See what we're doing here. Hey, Jortachi. What's up, buddy? So I think we killed pretty much everything here. We looted everything. Oh. I think we have some loot to go through, don't we? Can we get some new loot, chat? I should always do this at the end of the stream, not the beginning. Uh, he's got the really good heavy armor on. I think we got, like, some... We got this thing. At the beginning of combat, the wearer gains a shadow field effect, while under the effect, the wearer counts as being in full cover against all ranged attacks. I feel like we should give this to him. Yeah. That's not the Seneschal's job. Oh, it's for this. Uh. Okay, let's give it to her. Give it to Cassie, because she stands out in the middle of nowhere frequently. Cool. We got some other fun stuff, too, I think. Hmm. Uh. I see your name in the captain's room, so the backers list has been updated. Oh, cool! There we go. Awesome, man. Awesome. Heck yeah. Uh, we also got this monkey hide cape. Increase all incoming damage except direct. That's for our soldier. Grants the wearer an int, int bonus to dodge for them and all their allies. Who has the highest int? Pascal is 65 int. Stop it. Go to his... There we go. And he is wearing a garbage necklace, so we will... We will do that. Was it not a necklace? Bro. Stop it. It so looks like a necklace. It is a necklace. Bam. 6% dodge for the entire team. Okay, we'll take it. The Jin Blade of Emerus. Oh my. If the wearer deals damage to the target with this sword, the wielder gains plus 3 to their weapon skill, ballistic skill, toughness, and strength, while the creature suffers minus 3 until the end of combat. Jeez. That's pretty great. The only person that could use that is her, but she's not going to use that. Um, ten ballistic skill and twenty-five crit damage, or increase rate of fire and perplexed. Oh, I think we'll I think we'll stick with the twenty five percent crit damage. Yeah, yeah. Didn't we get a different neck for her as well? Maybe not. No, although that's good. Okay. Good for now. Oh, the bolt casing. That's what you're going to do. Thank you. Oh, that's on Ulfgar, though, and I can't get to Ulfgar right now. Um, hmm. One sec. That's a bummer. 
All right. Let's get some levelings going. This is 37, I believe. I know how to take risks. Okay. Oh, man. We, we got all the things up again. Let's do persuasion. And personal involvement. Every enemy killed by the master tactician increases the resolve by one until the end of combat. Cool. Solid. Hi. One sec, pet break. Okay. So for Argenta, we are looking at demolition, of course. Got to get our demo up. Um, hmm. Hey, Beldernik with the five bomb. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Sure. Appreciate that greatly. Thank you, thank you. Uh... Oh. Interesting. Hmm. That's not bad. That's not bad. Let's do that instead of Grenadier. Okay. All right. For Abelard. Arouse. Keep that spiraling up. Hey, Ariel. What's up, buddy? And then we also are looking at Hovering Bulwark. While Bulwark is active, the Vanguard counts as full cover for their allies and grants the adjacent allies stacks plus stacks of unyielding beacon divided by two damage deflection against range attacks. Cool. It's handy. For our girl, Juliet. Looking at Lorzinos and Savor the Kill. Savor the kill. Whenever the prey that is not being trailed is killed by an ally, the bounty hunter gains an extra turn with half their MP and AP. Ah, this is what Pascal already has. Great. That'll be handy. Oh, no. Okay. I wonder if they actually fixed this. Filtering protocols. Every time Pascal uses plasma or melta weapons, he regains one AP. Yep. 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 Okay. That's going to be broken. Cool. Like actually broken. Grenadier's 38. You wanted a custom to glory there. Look at the correct levels. Oh, I did. Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, get, I, can I get a custom to glory next time? Probably not. Let me see. Well, hey, there's a reason we save, right? Thank you, sir. Ba-boom. Yeah, I'm not good with reading. I don't read well. Yeah. Not a big reader. I, I blame the cat for distracting me. It's the cat's fault. Cat's fault! 100% cat's fault. Do 
Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Bum, 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 bum. Accustomed to glory. Whenever the Arch Militant or their ally uses a heroic act or a desperate measure, the Arch Militant gains two damage for all attacks until the end of combat. Yeah, pretty good. We'll take it. We'll take it. Cat is an agent of chaos? Yes. Yes, it is. One hundred cat scent. One hundred cat scent. Lore warp. And point of interest. Oh, cool. Okay. Great. Save and go. We're going to pop up on Janus. With the physical horrors of Kimura behind them, a long and arduous journey, possible only with the help of a Xenos guide lay ahead for the rogue trader and his party. From one strange destination to the next, through unknowable environments, the mere sight of which could drive one to madness. They manage to escape the labyrinthian webway and find their way back. Home? Cool. Morin's silhouette emerges from the thicket without disturbing a single blade of grass. He addresses you in an accusatory tone of dissatisfaction. I sensed your mind, monkey. What are you skulking by the webway gate? Why have you come to Lilithan in secret? Do you intend ill for us? Upon noticing Eklendril, Morin flinches, then says solemnly, Brother Eklendril, I praise the Surian for the fortune of seeing you again. Please step under my protection without delay. Brother Morian, I do not feel threatened. Not anymore. Morian looks at Erliette and says with enmity in his voice, Outcast Erliette, you walk the path paved with your own misdoings. One more monk once more monkey have found their way to our domain, and once more you aid them in doing so. <laughs> neither way, neither war nor ill intent follow in our wake, Warren. Your anger is unwarranted. I apologize for intruding upon your hallowed ground. It is where my journey from Kamara has taken me. <clears throat> you come from Kamara? Now I see. The gate refused to obey me because it was sealed from within. By the Dark Ones, no doubt. Lilithin was meant to become a slaughterhouse for the Dukari. Warren's gaze bores into Erliette for a few moments in tense silence as he considers something in his mind. At last, he says in a commanding tone, Your arrival is sudden, outcast Erliette, but perhaps there is purpose behind it. You will serve your people shortly. You know anything about my abduction? News of your disappearance has not yet reached Janus. My guess is that your close servants decided to conceal this event so as not to beget fear. You said earlier it would serve the Eldari once more. Are you looking to use her again? A monkey cannot comprehend the depth of the tragedy that befell our home, our Kruderok. The duty of every child of Assyrian is to do all they can to quell the pain of that loss, and earlier the outcast is no exception. 
Unlike you, Marin, I was able to find the truth. The truth of Kurdak's doom was revealed to me, even though that required me to throw myself in the Dark City's deadly embrace. Is the fire of our souls not better directed at worthy deeds than at arguing with our kin? I can see that something is troubling your delicate heart, my kinsman Warren. Share your feelings with me in the outcast, then, and I will reveal the truth of Kurdok's fate to you a little later. Hey, Vixen, what's up, buddy? It did! Thank you. I very much am, and I hope you are, too. That is uh, very nice of you to stop by. Appreciate it. We did not spend our time on Lilithan in fruitless grief. On the contrary, our lost kinspeople have answered my call and are now pleading for help. Driven by revenge, they set out to pursue the one responsible for Kruderak's rueful demise, only to end up as captives on a monkey world. Dare I hope that you will lend me your shoulder to lean on again, Ellen Talk? What world is it? That I know not. All my visions show me was an infinitely green sea, a living sea, and the maddening thirst of a hunter who was pursuing the children of Assyrian. Outcast, your path is taking you towards the stars again. Find our kin's people and do not let them perish. I will help you. How are things on Janus? Lilithan has been charitable to the monkey. It bestows special gifts upon some of your servants. It forges bonds with them. For the first time, our CR world so tolerant of your kind. It reminds me of just how much I still do not understand. Alas, your kin do not trouble themselves with contemplating this matter. They fear those gifted by Lilithan. They despise them. They seek to kill them. And that does not surprise me at all. Lilithan's slumber is restless. It has guarded a part of itself away from you. It is what the monkey call the isolated region. At first I thought it was an attempt to push you away so it could heal the wounds your cold hand has inflicted upon its flesh, but I see something else in what is transpiring. A mystery. Interesting. Your kinsman helped us escape from Kamara. This is where Eklindel's path and yours diverge, Monkey. He will stay with us when you leave. I am elated to once again be among those with whom I shared Kurdok's time of bloom, Warren. Of course. Thank you, Mo Ellen Talk. An iridescent haze momentarily clouds the world around you, and that moment is all it take takes for Moran to hide Eklindel behind a veil of his Xeno sorcery. We will speak of my kin's fate no longer. All that was meant to be said has been said. We will serve instructions to our monkeys serve allies so that they... Who was going to say servants? So that they provide you with a means of transportation. Farewell, monkey. I am pleased that our meeting did not spill blood into Lilithan's womb. Okay. How big is this game? Co's been at it for weeks. This game is gigantic. It's amazing. It's awesome. And I love it. Yep. That's where we are with this game. Yeah. Welcome to the bridge, Lord Captain. Like the rest of the crew, we are overjoyed by your return and thank the Emperor for it. The crew stares in awe and terror at the giant towering over the crowd. Some make the sign of the Aquila, uh, Aquila on their chests. Others collapse to their knees with a prayer to the God Emperor on their lips. This wave of pious shock does not seem to discompose Ulfar in the slightest. He just chuckles into his beard and glances around curiously. Lord Captain, allow me to express how glad I am that you have rejoined us alive and unharmed. Shireen, light of my eyes, I am overjoyed to see you among us once more. Truly, the Exalted One is merciful for showing you the way back home. I hope all the Ashmags who left us to languish without our Lord Captain have already become food for the Warp Demons. I do hope we get a chance to have a conversation in private very soon. For now, however, I dare not steal any more of the Rogue Trader's precious time. Lord Captain! I'm so glad to see you. I nearly lost it when you up and disappeared on me. I was getting... By, I was getting by on stimulants and recap. I barely slept at all, so I could keep listening to the whispers for any clue of how to find you. The only other time I felt so powerless was when Lady Theodora... Pardon me, Lord Captain, I'm talking nonsense. Dude, I really wonder what would have happened if Idira had been with us when Argenta told us her secret. Ulfar is sinking into the ship. Ah, he's sinking! How, do you, how much do you know about my abduction? Not much, Lord Captain. All contact with your party was lost shortly after the supposed pirates boarded the ship and abducted your companion's kinspeople. We immediately sent shuttles with boarding parties to your aid, but we didn't find anyone on the ship save for the crew who had all either been butchered or driven insane. I 
Heinrichs's gaze is focused on Erliette. His eyes burn with undisguised hatred and a promise. Erliette's expression is inscrutable, but her eyes are turned to you and only. You and you only. Since your lordship's body was never recovered, we hoped against hope that you were still alive. Alas, even our most alert auger operators never spotted anything suspicious, and thus our ignominious failure put you in dire peril. Here we inquire what happened. It does not matter. The topic of my disappearance is closed. Let's not let's not blame early on this. Where was my ship all this time? At an officer's council, we decided to take the ship to Footfall, where we could hear the gossip of the entire expanse. Smart. While you were away, we took every effort to find you. That resulted in a number of modifications to the ship that has significantly upgraded it. Thanks to a favorable deal made by the esteemed High Factorum, the ship is now equipped with the state-of-the-art auger systems and direction finders from Kiava Gamma. Nice. Let's return to our duties immediately. Your master is awaiting... Yeah, let's, let's return to our duties. Although I kind of wanted to do the celebration. No... Nomos! Hello, Nomos comes to welcome you back. We sense a great deed has been... This is... He looks kind of like he's got horns or something. I don't know about this guy. We sense a great deed has been done. A vivid imprint on existence. You did something very important. What was it? I escaped from a dark city of the Xenos and showed them mercy. It suits you. We see... What we see in you. Light and connections without the urge to destroy. Did Nomos say it correctly? I'm glad you're learning to understand me, Nomos. Nomos are glad, too. We must go now. We will come to speak with you later. We felt sadness that we could no longer communicate with you, and we were worried about your fate. One can detect with the naked eye the moment when Nomos leaves the bridge. The servitors stop moving in sync and slowly shuffle off to their posts. That's awesome. Is that Heinrich? Who is that? Yo, did I always have all these things on the back of my chair? What's all this stuff? Is that always there? Your Lordship, I must report highly compromising information about a member of your retinue, namely Miss Jay Hadari, who it turns out is nothing of the sort but a commoner, a fugitive from the law, and a deserter from the Imperial Guard. I have solid evidence to prove it. How'd you come to know of this? In your lordship's absence, the person whom we presently know as Jay Adari made a concerted effort to find you. After contacting all the cold traders in the sector, Hadari approached an individual by the name of Mercy, a highly influential and infamous figure in the Kasbalika mission. He was paid for an eye an eye-watering sum directly from your own coffers. Fearing the predatory interest of the Kasbalika would pose a threat to your coffers, I began my own investigation. It was entirely reasonable to suspect collusion. Hmm. One of the details. This person, Jay Hadari, served in the 19th Afrit Regiment. Let's talk to her. Shock me, did you, you little wannabe quester? Don't miss a thing, your servants, Co, and they're sneaky ass, too. They'll climb up a gork. Grox's ass to find out what they want to know. Then we need to talk about your past. Only if this scum slings his hook. <sighs> well, your lordship, ask away. I'll tell it like it is. I'm not going to try to wriggle out of it. Tell me your real story. So what do you want to hear, Sherry? Voice acting! A children's tale about a beautiful princess. A ballad about a queen of thieves. How about a new story, Sherin? Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived on a sand-covered lump of rock, and the core of that rock contained untold riches for servants of the Imperium. The girl scraped out those riches with her little hands, breaking her back and coughing up her lungs, on behalf of people who had never clapped eyes upon her, and who would never know her name. She did this every day until she turned 16, and then... 
Then his servants came and drafted the girl into the 19th Ifrit Regiment. Can you imagine? Of course, the regiment was wiped out on its first sortie. But the girl survived. The Exalted One protects. So what was next? Years serving in the Astra Militarium, just a shitload of hard labor, and fighting, and deals, and shady connections, and new opportunities. But everything in this world ends sooner or later, Sherin. The now not-so-little girl went and fell in with the Kasbalika. She saved up a little gold, and she even indulged in excess from time to time. Until living the good life almost cost the little girl her head after her patrons got caught in an internal investigation between the Officio Prefectus and Departamento Munitorum. So the girl ran as fast as her little legs could carry her, until her eyes and the whims of fortune brought her to the expanse. A shitty story, all things considered, Sherin. You have a family? The folks on Footfall are my only family, Sherin. The trickster twins in the rest of the rabble, plain talking and loyal as dogs. And sometimes as dull as the pommel of a worn out blade. So used to be in the Imperial Guard. Corporal Heidari reporting for duty, sir. I've had enough of the Astra Militarum shit to last a lifetime, Sherin. And my body's collected enough souvenirs from run-ins with Xenos and heretics to last two lifetimes. Except, when it comes to the Guard, there's no such thing as used to be. That wretched life sank its claws into me good. But that also means I remember what it's like to be a small, shaking, insignificant pawn. And that's why I appreciate what I have now all the more. How do you get involved with the Caspalica? What? You think it's difficult? Once me and my fellow guardsmen snuck into the upper city in search of a good watering hole where the high and mighty of that world congregated. Another time, our regiment was sent to defend the tallest spires on a hive world. And I had an epiphany. I saw how the other half lives. And by half, I mean the ones born with a diamond spoon in their mouth instead of an entrenching shovel rammed up their arse. Air. My eyes were open to the truth, Sherin. The Imperium is full of opportunities, even for people like myself. The trick is knowing whose palms to grease, whose boots to lick, whose throat to squeeze, and whose arses to kick. I was very popular with everyone in the Guard Command, you see. I'd procure things for them, whatever they wanted. And so the Kasbalika took notice. So you're also a deserter? You know, Sherin, I could still be bouncing around from one world to another, holed up on tired old ships with only venal grunts for company, if I hadn't decided I wanted more for my life. I accepted a shipment from the Kasbalika of certain... chemicals. You know, for carnal pleasures and the like. Some big vig was throwing a party to celebrate his fifth decade in the service. Hey, Susie. And that's when I got the attention of the newly arrived Commissar. I was rummaging through the pockets of Astra Militarum with one hand, and shuffling the Kasbalik in cargo with the other. You can imagine what would have happened to my head had the Commissar not started with my higher-ranked patrons. <laughs> that explains the lung implant, but what about the hand? It was orcs. <laughs> not everything I say is a lie, Sherin. I see. Who the fu- mm. Never mind. <laughs> Have you never once wanted to tell me the truth? <laughs> not once, if you can believe it. Uh, by the way, Shireen, I'm not really a princess. I'm filthy under hive scum, and I've been lying to you the whole time. I would have been flung out of your bed so fast, it would take my scream a few seconds to catch up. Okay. Why do you not tell me the truth immediately? For the same reason that anybody lies. I want people to like me. I want to attract them, not repel them. Fair. If you're wondering whether things have changed for me now, the answer is no. You haven't changed. My feelings haven't changed. I insist on honesty. Sorry, but no. We have made no vows over water, and I never made any promises to keep my heart open wide before you. I have 
and always will have my own past and my own life. And I see no reason why you should lay claim to them. But I do promise that my secrets will never cause you harm. That's fair. Did you really look for me? It's not as if I could just abandon you. Even smugglers have principles and feelings. Unfortunately, all I managed to do was spend a pile of your trons without anything to show for it. None of the operatives mm. who do business with Xenos knew where to find him. Not even Mercy. I shouldn't have reached out to him. He helped me move to the Expanse and set up business here a long time ago. But I liked it better when he was safely in my past. About your new persona. Are you worried I'm going to start spitting on the deck and shriveling your officer's ears with my foul tongue? Don't be, Shereen. I much prefer being seen as a princess rather than a deserter. I'll continue to play the part in front of the others, but you wanted to talk frankly, so I've dropped the act. Okay. Sir, yes sir, your lordship, Shereen. I'll be here, all primed and ready to go. Ah! I like her. She's fun.